I will complete this absolute proof that Einstein must be replaced as a supposed, and you have to look at the ethnic connection of Time magazine, uh, that Einstein is the man of the 20th century. Say what? I was forced then to put why world's greatest and various proofs. That's my website. So I will then have this part three that I have completed it to make sure I do complete it and sort of then backtrack as to the true facts. And uh, my website is uh, www.whyworldsgreatest.com. And then I had about 600 videos to each issue, I would go and dot the I's and cross the T's to the nth degree, all details and proofs. Supposedly, I can't get them. I write and they say, send this form. And I send the form back. No, they don't accept it. So I'm forced to redo these videos. And now, at, I will speak bluntly. I analyzed to the nth degree Einstein's opinions, his irrational thinking, his substituting a mathematical schema in the discipline that is not real physics, is real, this abstract di discipline to the nth degree of rational man with two feet on this earth what is reality and what is best to represent this real physical universe. It's gigantic, immense, towards infinite, complex, but it's real and let's really represent this universe of ours. And uh, then I must say now, uh, my work was forcibly taken from me by that immoral Jagger Hoover and parcel to others. And ethnic connections would make sure that um, they actually then became like owners of maybe what I have done in inventions. But let's go by just the true facts and I'll think back. And I have to then say, yeah, uh, there was Lorenz and Poincare and Leonard and uh, Maliva Marek and uh, Herman Minkowski and David Hilbert and Olinto Di Pedro and Professor Umberto Bardosi. And Einstein said he would ne never read Di Pedro's book. Well, he, Di Pedro didn't write a book, but Professor Umberto Bardosi wrote a book, proves that Olympia de Petro put forward E equals mc squared two years before Einstein, and that's where Einstein obtained the equation. He said, well, where's the real proof? Well, let's get to maybe chronologically what I have survived, because most of those who tried to get Hoover out were violently murdered. You understand? You can think of higher, higher, higher who? Uh, now you understand. My position that if he got me, who would know and get away with stealing, forcibly taking my Xerox. You better understand I invented Xerox, nobody else. Actually, RLX, actually, independent environment, mathematical physics, work for small color expert, from the development lab, walk by Halo, and he said, We started there. Hey, Lloyd Xerox, but English British intelligence was working with Hoover. So it became Hey, Lloyd Xerox here in the U.S. and rank Xerox in England worth money. And uh, then, uh, you see, I had 600 videos on any issue to the nth degree. And while I'm putting forward, to fast forward, what I really achieve is light-up-scaling stimuli electromagnetic radiation. 
I, yes, I did the original work of optical pumping. You better believe that. But am I put this on a voice stress analyzer, absolutely proof, I'm saying the truth, and I will take a polygraph, lie detector test, anytime, anywhere, on any editor's desk. Pay for it, but you must print the results. These great pillars of freedom and free speech that will tell the public what the true facts are, because they should know in this free country. Do you understand? Hoover forced me to be the original 007. Believe it or not, my ID, my main ID, is 007. And when I went to cash my checks with the girls there, I would joke with them because my daughter worked for the same company, but not in that store. And they would say, what's your ID? And I'd say, uh, 007, and they say, 007. And I say, look, I, you know, I try to be a perfectionist and a mathematical physicist. O is a letter, it's 007. And they look at me and say, 007. So it got to be a little bit of a, a tease like. I wasn't flirting with them, I just wanted to make their day lighter and try to joke with them because they, it's, they were doing work that, you know, is a little tiring and trying to pep them up a little bit. My daughter's doing the same work for the same company, but not at that store. When they found out who I was, that my daughter was working at the other store, because one of the girls would go to the other store and come back and say, hey, there's that old flirt over there. Yeah, when I walk in and talk to my daughter, you say, oh, that's that old flirt who comes into our place. If old flirt, he says, that's my father. You see, then when I walk in there and I they go to cash my check, I, they say, oh, you know, I go, I get them ready to say zero, zero. They say, oh, we know who you are, you're 007. You're 07. Then after a while, I say, we know who you are, you're 007. So it started half as uh, a fact and half as uh, kind of an inside joke. That's the truth. Now, uh, now what, what I'm saying, let's stick to the mathematical physics, if you please. And that is, you cannot change what a definition is. And he's saying now that we keep light, uh, 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 ultimate, not only a, a standard that's not changed, not changeable, but it's the ultimate velocity. And I've checked every reference that, and, and, and I, it's like an unabridged library, even the Bible. Found nothing that says, with Einstein's name that he can decree that light is the ultimate universal velocity. You understand? I was sure that theoretically at least, because CERN was a, a, a little by little by little announcing that they had equal the velocity of light, but they wouldn't publicly say that they had uh, uh, increased a increment greater than the velocity of light that by 1970, you figure it'll by another five years. So now I'm all set, I'm absolutely positive. I've been trying for a year to let Hoover let the phone call go through. I want to confer with Einstein because I want to work on mathematical physics and not in his racket. That's the best I can say about what's called the intelligence field. It's a, the best I can say it's a racket. They don't pay attention to any standards, any laws vicious, you know, the cloak and dagger, horrible. The best I say is a little dirty, lousy racket that Hoover has. So finally, Hoover says, all right, this wise Italian descent, he's always batting a thousand this time. Let's see if he can bet a thousand with Einstein. So he let the phone call go through. There's a one-on-one -on -one really showdown conference as to who would agree with who. And then I, of course, spoke to him real polite, suggesting, if you please, a modernization, is the way I would put it to him, of the Lorentz Einstein transformation equations. And I explained to him that if you have your book of relativity perfectly balanced on the point of a fulcrum, it's perfectly balanced, and you hit it with a photon, his photon, you know, you hit it with your photon. Uh, Compton had proved there's definitely momentum sufficient on a perfectly balanced fulcrum that your book of relativity will fall. 
Well, now you take and put it back up, perfectly balanced, and it falls. And you put it back up again, and it falls. You don't detect anything. That's because, in my humble opinion, that in future years, my, it will be proven that my rho prime equals your rho, my m prime, v prime, r will equal your m v r. You set r to unity, so my rho prime, m prime, v prime will equal your rho m v. If my m prime is, I had a finite particle theory, my finite particle theory, you're going towards the infinitesimal particle, like the fundamental building block of the universe. My m prime is less, my v prime has to be greater. And he says, are you sure? And I said, well, you know, I think CERN maybe in like by 19, this is 1955, April 1955, I think CERN by 1975 will have particles with less mass. They will definitely be able to break the light barrier with a particle. And he said, well, uh, as we discussed uh, various items uh, generally, and he said, uh, do you speak German? And uh, I said, oh, only a few words. He says, well, you know, like, uh, speak German. And I said, well, the only thing I know is Einstein's five sphere, who's going to buy the beer? And he laughed. He says, well, he says, uh, you call me again the same day and time next week. He says, I will study your uh, bold su uh, suggestions and we will continue. I said, right, thank you, Dr. Einstein. Now, I had critically studied Enrico Fermi. And then decided, well, here in the U.S., we're supposed to be better than anybody else. Maybe I can put forward something newer and greater than his fission. And I had noticed there was a two fusions every fission in the chain reaction. And then I put forward both in the, uh, say, in the chemical standard way, and then vertically by atomic weights, a proof, mathematical physics. It was a freshman's type science paper, but it was valid of hydrogen fusion energy, the H-bomb, as I have said. Do you understand? So now, Einstein, with his irrational thinking, you cannot change space. Space is space. You can say there's a field. Understand what I'm saying. The center line, center line of the Earth this G mass, it has a gravitational field. And Einstein will use theoretical experiments. So then I can use theoretical experiments. And I say to him, you have the field. Well, you can express in the uh, uh, actual uh, field equations, <laughs> gotta be careful about whose field equations, but, and before I forget, you know, I would want, he says, like what? As far as the Lorentz Einstein transformation equation. And I said, well, in my opinion, I can have uh, what I call a capital C transformation equations. Then I'll get to the center line, center line of the G gravitational field. Uh, and, and that is, uh, Cap, my capital X prime equals capital X minus VT over the square root of 1 minus V squared over capital C squared, where capital C is equal to or greater than the velocity of light. So he's going to study that. Now I call him again. And the way we did it was like the first time, only this time he had to be sure, he said. I would talk to his living secretary. She would take it down in shorthand. We'd go back and forth over and over again. Something like take two minutes, take like 10, 15 minutes until she got it absolutely the way I wanted to tell him. Then she would talk to him in German. And I can understand a couple of words, but they would talk in German. When he was sure he had exactly my thinking, then he would confer with me in English. But it was still, he would mention, uh, do you speak Dutch? But now I can say he never, he knew I'm Italian. He said he never said we can speak Italian. That's because he's still covering up for De Petro. Do you understand? So he said, well, uh, yes, I will continue to de delve into this. He says, but they told me not to work with you. Well, I thought that's what Hoover would do. It's going to take part four. I said, well, all right, but he told me to call him back the same day and time next week. I says, all right. 
We will continue.